Hey everybody, it's Adam back again from the Army Painter with yet another video tutorial. In today's video, we're going to further explore some of the characters that we've developed for a brand new product line that we're calling Game Master. Every party has that one dwarf cleric, right? Yalgrim Iron Oath is a little bit different. He's stoic, proud, and fiercely loyal. Yalgrim is always at the forefront of the fighting, and his protective spells have saved the party more often than just about anything else. I'm really, really enjoying painting up this dwarf model. Today we're going to be expanding on some of the basic techniques and principles that we taught and learned in our Adventure Ready tutorial by applying some simple highlights and reestablishing some of those base tones in what we're calling a level up tutorial. So let's take a look at some of the paints that we're going to be needing today. Now that you've got your paints, go ahead and grab some clean rinsing water. I like to use my wet palette, and if you haven't gotten one yet, you should really give it a try. And go ahead and find your favorite brush, and let's get right to it. We'll start off by re-establishing the base tones. We're calling this a first highlight, and I'm gonna apply our first highlight of ruddy skin to all of the raised skin areas on our Dwarf Cleric. You want to be very careful here. You just want to paint inside the lines that the wash left us in the previous tutorial, the previous step. That allowed us some definition and guides us on where the raised edges are. And also be careful not to get the skin tones on any of the other colors on the model. Next, we're going to apply a very similar application. We're just going to highlight and reestablish that bright orange hair. And we're using Rust Monster from the D&D Nolzer's Marvelous Pigment Syringe. Now, you can see that the wash allowed the raised areas to stand out, so we're just going to follow them along, tracing the raised areas with this orange paint. Now, on the areas like here on the braids, you can see that there's just little bumps, and we're just going to apply little dots of that orange paint. If you feel the need to go back and apply a second coat, by all means, Orange pigments do tend to be weaker pigments along with red and yellow, so you want to work in layers here to achieve a nice, strong highlight. Now that I'm done with the face and the beard, we're going to go back and reestablish some of these green tones. And we are using Feywild Emerald. This is a 100% color match to the primer coat that we used initially, and we used green skin from the Army Painter's Color Primer range. I'm just going to find the raised areas along this model, like the hard edges of the robes. Like here and here I can apply an edge highlight, where I'm just taking the edge of the brush and reestablishing those green tones. And what you really want to do is you want to allow the wash that we applied in the previous tutorial, in the previous step, to act as a guide. These are the outside lines in your coloring book, if your model was a coloring book. So just let those pigments from the wash, those darker pigments from the wash step, exist in the recesses and work up those base tones again. We are just reestablishing the base tones. On areas like here on the arm, we're just gonna find that top nook, that corner, leaving that wash in the recesses, and we're just gonna apply a simple thin coat just to reestablish that green, make it nice and bright. Areas like here on the shield, I'm gonna water down my paint just a little bit more. So I have a little bit more control, and I'm just gonna reestablish the green tone on the inside. I'm not gonna worry too much about those hard edges. I just wanna make it a little bit brighter, stand out a little bit more on the inside of this shield. Now with a little bit of skeleton bone, I'm just gonna highlight the piece of parchment that he has attached to his hip. And with rigid leather, we will reestablish all of the brown leather bits on the model, like the belt here, his pouch, and of course, his gloves. Now again, we wanna work on leaving the wash in the recesses from our Adventure Ready tutorial. We're just reestablishing these base tones with an initial highlight to level up this paint job and really make it stand out. Now before we go into highlighting all the metallics, I just wanna take a moment to reestablish some of the cobblestones. Now I'm going back to orc skin to paint in all of the gray cobblestones. And then let me just rinse my brush a little bit and I'll show you here on camera. And I will use skeleton bone to re-establish the tan pavers. And I had a mix and it's still nice and wet on my wet palette 
of rigid leather and skeleton bone. I'm going to apply that to all these lighter brown pavers on the base. So just take your time, go around the base, and you want to just ensure that you're coloring in the tops of the pavers and not in the recesses where the wash has settled. Now it's time to move on to highlighting the metallics and reestablishing the base tones. I've got mithril silver here, and I'm just going to reestablish the areas that I painted with mithril silver in the base coating stage in our adventure ready tutorial. We're just going to leave the wash into the recesses like there at the head of the mace and some of the metallic here like his belt buckle and the buckle around his pouch. There's a couple pieces right here, these metallic pieces that are holding his scroll in place. Just very simply going around the miniature, finding the areas that we previously base coated and reestablishing them with the same color. Here at the Army Painter, we are usually busy developing paints and hobby accessories, so it's not often that we get to jump in and develop characters. So this whole Game Master process and developing these characters to help tell the Game Master story has been a really, really fun experience. We got to work with a very talented, world-renowned illustrator and graphic designer by the name of John Gallagher, and he helped us out with some of the artwork for these characters and the Game Master box, which you'll be seeing not too far from now. So let's take a listen to what John had to say about our favorite dwarf cleric. Uh, the beard, the beard is everything. <laughs> Fear the beard. Uh, and if you if you get that right, and plus they have to. Uh, I don't think there's ever been anything remotely resembling a jovial dwarf. I'm sure they have their moments of mirth and merriment, but they're generally seen as kind of dour and and taciturn and and grumpy. So it's usually best to try and capture them at that because again we don't want any ambiguity we don't want any uncertainty or sliding over into other demi-human uh races like is it a is it a gnome or is it like you always want to make sure that you kind of fall into and well some may you know suggest perhaps that it's it's a trope i don't think at this point that that's really part of the conversation i think that it's it's a consensus of design, uh, even in terms of like the clothing they wear, that they have strong vector based uh, and, and of an aesthetic showing a certain rigidity and a certain angular power to, to how they not only perceive themselves, but how uh, the fantasy world in general would perceive the, the dwarf experience. John, thank you so much. We loved work. Oh, Jesus, bug. I got a bug in the studio. I got to get it off here. Thank you, John, again, for all of your hard work on these illustrations of our Game Master characters. So I'm just taking a bit of this mithril silver and I'm going to apply it to all of the raised areas on the armor. You can see these joints here on the armor and the crease here on the brow of our dwarf cleric. And in most cases, I'm just gonna apply a simple edge highlight, but in some of these areas, I'm gonna go ahead and feather this on almost like a dry brush with my detail brush here, just to really bring this gold armor closer to that white gold that we're going for to try and replicate John's illustrations as best we can. So go ahead, thin down your paints on your wet palette when you're focusing in on these detailed areas, like, and especially all of these details on the back of the shield. You're gonna to wanna to thin down that mithril silver on your wet palette just so you have supreme and ultimate control. In some of these areas here, I'm gonna be applying an edge highlight, just taking the edge of my brush and just tracing the edge of the brush along the side. If you do mess up a little bit, it's okay. Because that paint is nice and wet, you can just wick it away with your finger real quickly. But go ahead and find these raised areas, find these fine details on the model, the areas that the light is going to catch the most, and go ahead and apply this final highlight of mithril silver to them. This is really gonna help to push that bright white gold effect that we're going for our dwarf cleric. So carefully go around the rest of the model, find all the areas that you wanna highlight and just pick them out. It's very simple here. Most of the hard work was done for us with that flesh tone wash over top of these gold panels, but you can see right on camera by picking them out with this silver, it really makes them pop.
I sure hope that you enjoyed advancing what we learned in our adventure ready tutorial in this level up tutorial. Remember that you can find all of the paints and products that we use today from your friendly local game store or your favorite online provider such as Amazon or at www.thearmypainter.com. Remember that the magic in miniature paintings that it can be as simple or as challenging as you'd like it to be, but with the right techniques, you're sure to achieve some great results. We'll see you next time.